What is going on everybody? We have some news to talk about when it comes to Escape from Tarkov patch 0.12, which is looking to be the largest content patch the game has ever seen. But before we begin talking about that, I do want to mention that last week, Pesley invited me onto his podcast to discuss the preliminary patch notes. And we broke down all the new content, the weapons, and the changes to the current game, and some of the implications that they may have on the gameplay itself. If you're interested, I'll include a link in the description box below that will take you to that podcast. And if you're interested in reading the notes for yourself, I'll also include a link that will take you to the subreddit where you can check out all the new stuff coming to Tarkov. So first off, let's talk a little bit about the hideout. We finally get a better understanding on the true purpose of the hideout and how it's going to be affecting our ability to survive and thrive in and out of the raids. And this is directly tied to out of raid healing and character maintenance. Although we've kind of known that the hideout was going to impact out of raid healing, I honestly wasn't expecting it on the first patch the hideout was released. So it's going to be kind of exciting to see how that's going to be changing the ability for your PMC to jump in and out of raid. So this is what we know so far. Whenever your character extracts, the health, hydration, and energy levels of your character will remain the same. This will be regenerating based off of your hideout improvements, or you can purchase food, water, or medications to instantly restore those parts of your character's health. And if you don't want to spend any of your hard earned rubles, then the rate of regeneration is directly dependent on the improvements you've made on your hideout. Now you're probably wondering what happens if you die. Well, you're gonna come back to life, but your health is gonna be at 30% of its maximum value, and it's gonna have to slowly regenerate based off of your improvements, or you're gonna have to buy the medication to get back into the fight. But I guess you could also just immediately jump back into the raid at 30% HP and try to find meds in the raid, or attempt to complete your mission and raids at a significant cost to your health, and that's gonna be affecting your ability to survive. I think out of all the changes and new things coming to the game, this is one that's probably gonna have the largest implications, and one that I would love to hear your opinion about, so let me know in the comment section below. But with that, let's move on to the next topic. So, weapon presets. This is something that I know I've been wanting for a long time. You spend like 15, 20 minutes building this really crazy gun with maybe low weight or good ergonomics or a balanced weapon, something that isn't necessarily the meta, and then you kind of forget what you piece together. Well, no longer. You will be able to remember and save those builds and even share them with your communities and friends much easier. You can now spend hours weapon smithing interesting weapon builds and saving them for easy access, or if it's a weapon that you like to use all the time, you can save it so you can build it faster to get back into your raids after you die and lose it. There's going to be so many great applications for this tool, and I'm super pumped to start utilizing it. And it's also going to be good for streaming and making YouTube videos because I can directly link you guys to the weapon builds I'm discussing in the videos that I make. And it's going to be great for teaching new players different weapon modifications and even meta weapons. This week, the developers also dropped the Point 12 trailer, which you guys are seeing in the background of this video, and it's showing off the brand new map, the Reserve Base. Now, according to the developers, this is going to be the largest maps in terms of explorable areas. It's going to have new extraction mechanics, like the train that you're seeing in the video, uh, and there's going to be new mounted machine guns, uh, the 12.7, so the 50 caliber machine guns, and the stationary 30 millimeter automatic grenade launcher, which is absolutely shredding people throughout this entire trailer. And it's going to be kind of scary. I don't know how much ammunition those weapons are going to spawn with. I suspect not very much, but it might be interesting to see if players can bring ammo in for a specific style of raid, maybe going after the new scab boss, or for some specific strategy that helps people leave the raid. Either way, we don't really know how devastating they're going to be other than the footage that we've seen in the trailer, and it looks pretty intense, like especially the grenade launcher. It might even be too powerful depending on how much ammunition is available. So that's something that's going to be kind of its own thing and deserves its own discussion after the patch gets released. Um, there's going to be something new though too, minefields, which is kind of funny. You see in the trailer a guy sort of running through the open field hits a landmine while he's trying to go, assuming to an extraction point, and doesn't quite make it. So that might be one of the interesting exfil mechanics that they're talking about. You can risk leaving the area easier, but you might step on a mine. 
Uh, and also on the military base, we got uh, Glucar, who is a scat boss with special tactics and his own team of six bodyguards that claim that they own the reserve military base. You're gonna have to go in there, kick their ass, take his Ash-12. He's even gonna have a way to get into a secured bunker, which might have some really interesting loot. And you see that featured in the trailer as well. Now, one of my favorite maps happens to be Woods, and Woods is also getting a new scat boss, Sturtman, but they're not featured in the Patch.12 reveal trailer because it's largely focused uh, on the new military base. So we don't really have that much information on him other than the fact that he's gonna be operating around the sawmill on Woods. He has a stash of valuable items that is going to be on the map, and he keeps the key to that on him. So you're gonna have to kill him so you can get some cool loot. And he also is going to be using a sniper rifle and attacking at a distance, trying to use cover and being covert. And he's going to allow players to uh, move into a suitable distance to snipe rather than always engaging them at point blank, or at least that's kind of what the patch notes are alluding to. He's going to have two guards, and uh, we'll see. Both the guards are going to be using some sort of long-range weapon. Now, with the next patch, we have piles of new equipment that's going to be added into the game and during the podcast we talk about each and every one of them but in this video i want to specifically focus on the weapons themselves the new guns come into the game starting with the ash 12 we've known about this one for a while it's going to be the weapon that glue car has an ash 12 with a suppressor but it's important to remember that this is going to be a slug style weapon high high damage with moderate to low pen so if you know anything about the Tarkov metagame when it comes to PvP, low pen rounds don't typically do that well unless they're under certain specific situations. Like getting a jump on a player that doesn't really know where you are with leg meta or noticing that they're not wearing a helmet or face shield and going for a single face shot. Now one thing I was bringing up with my stream was an application for the Ash 12 could be that it does ridiculously high damage to armor. So it may not match, say, an M995 round or a 7N39 while going through a class 5 body armor or class 6 body armor. It might destroy that armor nearly as fast and still net a kill at a reasonable amount of time. But I foresee the Ash-12 being a really cool gun in the first month or two, but people kind of going back to their rifles in the late game. Now next, we have the Beretta M9, which is probably one of the most iconic pistols in the world, but it is also 9mm and 9mm we have a AP round that has 25 pen and that's suitable of kind of going through class 3 face shields sometimes but obviously falls short to any other armor piercing weapon in the game and we already have the Grotch, the Glock 18, 17 and a P226 that all shoot 9mm and all have pretty decent recoil patterns but the one thing I think the Beretta could be good for is solid iron sights from the get-go they also might make it cheaper than a P226 or a Grotch, making it somewhere around like 9,000 to 10,000 rubles. And the suppressors might be better with the iron sights because sometimes the suppressors in Tarkov, they rise above the irons a little bit too much, where with the M9, I suspect it won't be as big of an issue. But the purpose for the M9 should be budget 9mm pistol. So next we have the TX-15, which is a AR-15 variant, the TX-15 from Lone Star Arms with a unique upper and lower receiver. A proper AR-15 has now been introduced into Tarkov, and I'm sure a lot of you Americans out there are gonna be super amped. And it really looks like the Lone Star, correct me if I'm wrong, sits more in like a medium to long distance encounter DMR role, which is kind of how a lot of people use the ADAR right now in Tarkov. So it makes sense. Semi-automatic, fast moving rounds, M995, longer barrels, great optics. That's going to be the true purpose of this weapon. But of course, M995 is devastating close and medium distance as well. But in the video and the images that we've seen of the Lone Star, it is modified in a way to make it seem like a DMR. And that's where I feel like it's gonna be most used. But semi-automatic 5.56 isn't really anything too new for Tarkov since we have the ADAR, the HK416, and the M4 already, as well as an MDR. So we all kind of know it's going to be a great weapon regardless of the modifications that you put on it. And it's a welcome addition to Tarkov, but nothing too new. However, 
the next two weapons, of course, are probably the most uh, anticipated for point 12, that being the P90 and the FN57. So the FN57, in my opinion, is the weapon that is coming to the game that I think is going to have the biggest impact and the one that I'm most excited about. Now, currently in Escape for Tarkov, we do already have sort of an armor-piercing pistol, which is the SR-1MP, or commonly referred to as the Shrimp, but that pistol is probably one of the most difficult weapons to use reliably in Tarkov due to its odd rate of fire and recoil patterns. Um, it's, it's, like, it's fun to use, but it's slow, it's heavy, and it's difficult to use under pressure. Where the FN57 is going to be fitting that role, but probably doing a much better job with higher penetration ratings, possibly up to 35 or greater, but with a smoother action similar to a Glock 17 with better recoil control. And you can see that in the patch trailer itself, it being used, and it doesn't look like it's going to be that bad at all. And it also looks like it's going to come with some modifications right out the gate, which is going to be great. So if you're somebody who loves to run around with a sniper rifle on their back and a pistol in their hands, or somebody who likes to have a sidearm that they can truly trust that punches through face shields, but not every round will, but there will be an armor piercing round for the 5.7, and this pistol is going to change the game for you. Or if you're a rare exception where you're somebody who almost exclusively just uses sidearms either, either for fun or for a challenge, you're finally going to get something a little bit more reliable than going for the leg meta with APB SP7 um, or trying to get the face shot on somebody wearing a high tier helmet and praying that your AP round is going to penetrate. Now paired with that is the P90, the FMP90, which also shoots the 5.7 round with a 50 round magazine capacity, 900 rounds per minute, very similar to other SMGs that we have in Tarkov. And I don't think the P90 is going to have as big of an impact on the game as people assume. I think the, the, the FN57 the pistol will be a lot better than that, simply because we have the MP7 with AP rounds. We have Ketters, we have MP5s, we have MPXs. Of course, you have those AP rounds with the uh, P90, and it's going to be great for going through Class 3 face shields, possibly even Class 4 helmets. We really don't know just yet. But with the MP7, we can already do that and do it fairly well. So if you're a big fan of the MP7, the P90 is just going to be yet another weapon at your disposal. It's going to be like an AP MP7 with a greater magazine capacity, possibly with more stability, ergonomics, and control than MP7. But we really don't know the stats on the gun from a video game perspective just yet. But in the patch trailer, we did see it in action, and it looks like it's going to be a Savage, but again, not as exciting to me personally as the FN57 pistol. So another big change coming to the game comes with equipment and body armor. So I'm sure you guys know already, but if you don't, the AVS will now be armored, the Black Rock won't be, but they're going to have different attributes, and the number of magazines and item slots that they have has been expanded. But that also extends to all the other chest rigs with plate carriers in the game. You're not going to be able to wear body armor under them. So now you're going to have to choose whether or not you want to wear more hard body armor like a Gen 4 or you wear something like an M2 or a Tactech. You won't be able to wear both at the exact same time. However, that being said, I, I do think you should be, able, uh, should be allowed to wear a PAKA under a Tactech or an M2. Like soft body armors could have a purpose allowing them to actually be worn under those plate carriers, but at an ergonomic cost or like with low armor protection classes, like maybe even class one, class two maximum. But I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about that in the comment section below. Now for all my bush wookies out there or guys that used to like playing DayZ that care about concealment, the last thing I want to talk about in today's video is the grass changes. But it's going to be a little bit unclear because I don't know whether or not they're going to allow players to disable the grass in the settings or through some sort of application uh, or everybody is going to be at the exact same rendering distance with the grass. In games like Escape from Tarkov, grass is more than just making the game look beautiful. It is a way to defend yourself when you're taking fire at a distance. Laying prone in long grass prevents your enemy from seeing you accurately and you might be able to survive because of it. If a player has the ability to disable that on the fly, they gain a massive advantage and nobody would actually have the foliage enabled at all. There will be no reason to have it unless you want to play at a disadvantage or you're recording for some cool gameplay video or machinima. We don't know 
if you can disable it or enable it or change it just yet, but it's something that I'm really gonna be eager to see the moment I get my hands on point 12. So those are the things that I am the most excited about when it comes to the brand new Escape from Tarkov patch coming any day now. We don't have a date just yet. Maybe by the time that I upload this video, we might, I don't know. But either way, I'm excited and patiently waiting to get my hands on all this new content, and I hope you guys are too. So consider subscribing here to my YouTube channel, so I'm going to be uploading videos on the new guns, the new map, the new missions, the hideout, the scab boss, the equipment, you name it. I'm going to be taking a look at it here and on the live stream, Monday through Saturday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. When the wipe happens, when the patch actually drops, I'm going to be putting in some serious time. So I might not be uploading a lot of content on the first or second day of the patch, but I'll be chopping that stuff up and making videos for my first couple days and giving you guys my impressions on Point 12 here on YouTube. So follow me on Twitch, subscribe here on YouTube, and I'll catch you guys next time.